Thank you for coming out. This is fabulous. It's good to see the club all spick and span and coats of paint and stuff. Here's a little thing from uh, I just I, I brilliantly bought out an album just as the pandemic hit, so that was fantastic timing. And, um, <laughs> that's called guitar music, and I play uh, some iconic kind of finger style pieces on there. This one's called The Last Steam Engine Train by the wonderful John Fay. <laughs> one that's uh, one of a slow bluesy sort of ballad piece and I wrote uh, for my album The River Flows and uh, kind of was inspired by a guy I met in Tasmania named Billy Whitt, a wonderful guitar player, he's in Hobart. Saw him, we saw him playing there when we were on the road, Benny and I, and um, knocked us out and uh, called, called this tune watching Billy play the blues.
watching Billy play the blues. Now back to my roots here. This is uh, the mighty Mississippi John Hurt. From my uh, Into the Blues album, one of my favourite uh, country blues pieces by one of my favourite guitar players of all time, John Hurt. This is called Frankie and Albert. <laughs> singing and uh, I opened my mouth to do a few notes and nothing came out. You know. and I tried singing with a mask on, it was perfect. <laughs> so it could be a new act. Um, another instrumental on my new album, Guitar Music, and this is by an iconic uh, English guitarist named Bert Yanch. And uh, if you... One of the ones that uh, really inspired many, many fingerstyle guitar players. 
and in England had its own sort of uh, concept of uh, acoustic blues and uh, kind of mixed with Celtic things actually at the time. It's a beautiful piece of music by David Graham, it's called uh, Angie. Tribute to my other heroes, Big Bill and Blind Blake. This is this thing called Guitar Shuffle. So it's been a great time again.
I wrote about Sonny and Brownie, it's kind of the story of their life in a way and uh, they're very influential to all of us who play the blues and uh, this is called Sonny and Brownie. This is by a great Dwayne Orman and uh, it's called Little Martha, one of the first uh, solo pieces I ever heard and it's been in my head ever since. I never really played it back in the old days. It came out in the early, early 70s and uh, it's the only solo piece I'm aware of that uh, Dwayne Orman ever recorded. In the middle of it I sort of added a little bit which I call blues for Dwayne and uh, hope he wouldn't mind. Thank you. 
It's called Monday Morning Blues, it's not my new album. I've been listening to John Hurt uh, my whole life, I must say, I just happen to have missed this one somewhere along the way. Which is a good thing, I keep discovering these tunes by these old masters, this one is a lovely thing. I've rearranged, it's called uh, Monday Morning Blues. Billy Holiday, the great Billy Holiday, in an interview famously once said that uh, they asked what their favourite uh, piece of music she ever recorded, it was a tune called Yesterday's, and uh, I thought that's a pretty good recommendation for a tune I've ever heard. So I checked it out, 
and a uh, beautiful melody called Yesterday's. It's on an early album of mine, uh, Closer to Home, but I love this piece. Hope you enjoy it. It's kind of a jazzy blues thing, Yesterday's. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful to play, come back and, and do something. <laughs> We're alive again. <laughs> Thank you to uh, the NBAS, John, and everybody in the NBAS. Thank you very much, folks. And uh, I've been playing this one at the NBAS uh, since I was about five years old, I think. <laughs> We're still making 78s back then, but um, 
And so I kind of, one of the, uh, look, I'll best tell you the story about it because I've got about a few minutes left. I was about uh, 14 years old or thereabouts and um, this is in the uh, late 60s and uh, don't tell anybody. And um, the big struggle for a teenager in those days was getting your hair cut. I don't know whether you guys remember that. But, um, it was World War Three at my place, growing your hair long. Anyway, I was forced to go to this barber shop in Paran, and he was an absolute butcher. And um, and I was just starting to get really interested in music and uh, rock and roll and the Beatles and the Stones and all that. And I went in this barber shop, and he gave me the old short back and sides and ruined my whole image completely. Uh, it did not go with flares, believe me. And, um, Nothing goes with flares. Nothing? Thank you, pardon. <laughs> Everything went with flares then. And beads. <laughs> anyway, this guy had a crate of records in his, in his uh, barber shop. He was selling records second hand. Probably everything else too, if you like, actually. But um, he was a really smooth operator, this guy. And uh, do you remember those barber shops with pictures of Efren Zimbalist Jr. on the counter? He thought, I'm in the wrong place. And, uh, anyway, I used to flick through this guy's albums and he had an album called Big Bill Brooms. He plays the blues. And uh, I was like, I've heard about it you know, blues, you know, I think this looks really interesting because my sisters were folkies and they told me about connection between blues and the Stones and the Beatles and all that. So uh, I bought this album, Big Bill Renzi Plays the Blues. I took it home and uh, before that, before they sent me to this hairdresser, I was going to be an architect. And when I came home, I was going to be a blues man. And they, they would have regretted that, that every day of their life thereafter. So... <laughs> so the, the opening track on this uh, particular album of Big Bells, it was recorded in Paris in uh, the late 40s, early 50s, was Hey Hey. I'm going to play it for you now. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, if you enjoy my music, folks, Ellie's got some albums down at back there. This is on Into the Blues. My new album's called Guitar Music. I hope to see you all around town soon. And things start happening.
Thank you. 